now available paperback and e-readers, Isis, Ride of Dragon. God is Next Door and John Haynes team up to take on the Dark Vampire in this action-packed Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Ride of Dracula in paperback and e-reader than online booksellers today. I got a chance to watch Spider-Man Homecoming at the Magic Johnson this Saturday, and I was deeply offended at what I saw. And the reason why I was deeply offended was because these people at Disney went out of their way to try to push an agenda inside of a children's film. And as I saw that, I said, how low can a corporation go in trying to push a narrative? Because this narrative that they're trying to push was so obvious to me, it wasn't funny. And as I looked at that narrative, it was clear to me that it was a slap in the face towards black men. Because when you look at this Spider-Man Homecoming, the first insult that they throw at black men is by taking Miles Morales' story and then transposing it onto Peter Parker. Basically saying, we're going to take this white character and give him this black man story by, and then erase the black man from his own film. If you wanted to make a Miles Morales story, go out and make a Miles Morales story. Don't transpose Peter Parker onto Miles Morales. Basically, when you do that, you're saying that Miles Morales has no value as a character and that a black character has no value, so you're just going to put this white character in their place. That's a slap in the face towards black men. The second slap in the face towards black men in this film was the constant push of the swirling agenda. And what the swirling agenda is, is pushing this whole idea that black women lust after white men and that black women want to have relationships with white men. This is a narrative that Disney has been pushing for a while with TV shows like Scandal, and it, it really irked me to see them push that agenda in Spider-Man Homecoming. To put that in a kid's film, that was another slap in the face at black men, because Peter Parker's two love interests are both black females, and you have your Peter Parker sitting there pining after a black female, and then you have these, the other black female played by Zendaya chasing after Peter Parker, pretty much promoting the whole idea of the deification and worship of white men by black women. And the further pushing of the swirling agenda in this film also was with the Vulture and his wife. Because you have the Vulture, who was played by Michael Keaton, he has a black wife, and that cemented in my mind that in this film there was a clear agenda towards pushing this whole swirling agenda and the whole idea that a black woman needs to be with a white man in order to be considered valuable and that black on black relationships have absolutely no value. When I looked at that film, that was a slap in the face to me as a black man and as I watched this film, I just saw numerous slaps in the face towards me as a black man. As I watched this film even further, I began to also see things that offended me as related to this whole social justice warrior agenda that Marvel has been pushing because in put, creating and changing the adaptation of this film from Peter Parker from Peter Parker comics to Miles Morales, they pushed a diversity agenda where Peter Parker's friends and students are a whole diverse cast. But unfortunately, the whole diverse cast is meant to make and present Peter Parker as better than the other characters because in the, in the old Spider-Man comics, Flash Thompson is a big muscular jock. But in this movie, he's an Indian nerd with a rich father. And that's a slap in the face towards people who are Indian by, because it's saying that they cannot be a strong alpha male in the same way that Flash Thompson in the comics is. And then you have Peter Parker's best friend who was a fat Pacific Islander. And that, again, fits a stereotype for Pacific Islanders and it also makes Peter Parker look like he's better and superior because he's the strong, muscular, white male and his best friend is a fat guy. And as I look at this film, it, it just, it was glaring to me all the stereotypes that we're presenting and the whole idea of creating a smooth world so that the white male character can appear to be something that he's not. And this is something I've seen done on CW with the Berlanti production shows like Arrow, and I was sad for me to see Marvel Studios take a page from Greg Berlanti's script 
and then bring it over to Marvel Studios with this Spider-Man Homecoming because I thought Marvel Studios would do better than that because when I, after seeing Captain America Civil War and the presentation of Black Panther, War Machine, and Falcon on an equal level on, on the same playing field as Captain America and having significant roles equal to Captain America and Iron Man in Captain America Civil War, I thought Marvel Studios was going to take a step forward. Unfortunately, Marvel Studios took a huge step backwards with this Spider-Man Homecoming and its diversity push. Now, when I look at this diversity push, as compared to Captain America Civil War, what was presented in Spider-Man Homecoming was the wrong way to promote diversity. What was presented in this film was a shallow attempt at diversity that pretty much breathed new life into old stereotypes and reinforced old ideas about people of color. As I look at that film, it, it pales in comparison to Captain America Civil War. Captain America Civil War was diversity done right. You had people of color in the film who were the equal of the white heroes. You had people of color who were comp just as competent as the white heroes. You had people of color who were just as skilled as the white heroes. And you had people of color who had significant roles in the story as the white heroes. And when you look at Captain America Civil War, that was the step Marvel Studios should have continued to try to make. But when I look at Spider-Man Homecoming, that's a step back, and it, pretty, and it shows me the racism that is deep ingrained within white liberal Hollywood as it relates to people of color. As I look at that film, it didn't present me with positive images of people of color, and what was really sad is that you had this young cast presented in a way that promoted old stereotypes and promoted narratives that were just as dysfunctional as the ones ABC puts on Scandal, another Disney program. And they want me to sit there and believe that, that, that Black Panther is going to promote diversity. When I look at this film, and it shows me how much work Disney really needs to do as related to diversity. Because I look at this film, and this film is a huge step back from Marvel Studios, and it's not a great film as I see it, because it's clearly a slap in the face to black men. It's an insult to black men. And it says that black men have no value in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It takes all the gains made by Captain America Civil War and erases them. And it shows me that in their homecoming, they have a, there's a lot more that they have to do in the future towards promoting diversity. When I look at this Spider-Man homecoming, I'm deeply angry and I'm deeply disappointed in it. It's, it's a step back for the studio, and it's a real testament to how, how, how much more work people have to do regarding race relations in America. If you'd like to help me make more videos, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct Universe titles, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.